What's up guys, it is JBeebs here and welcome to what is going to be a huge episode of the Cambridge United Road to Glory on FIFA 17. Last episode, we won a trophy. I'm not going to say which one, but we won a trophy. Go ahead, watch that. We also made a lot of big, 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 big transfers last episode, so you're going to be confused if you didn't watch the last one. So again, go watch the last episode. Alright, let's get into it. Starting off with the youth scouts, as we do always, going to England for half a year just to get some players. Same for Northern Ireland and for the Republic of Ireland. But big move. Lucas Jacobs has departed the club. He asked to leave after we failed to negotiate a new contract. He's gone to Everton for just under $30 million. I think it was a good bit of business by us. That's definitely going to help us considering... He, he isn't a full-time starter. So I've loaned out Lars de Graaf to Sunderland for two years. He's not going to be starting anymore, but I want to keep him in the future plans. But it's just a matter of, I just don't know how to rotate the squad properly. Kristen Gunderson is going on a two-year loan move to KVC Westerlo. Got promoted from the Youth Academy last year, so he's going out on loan. Rory McKeith has been sold to West Brom for $12 million. Good bit of business by me, I'd say. Ed Green is going to go on a two-year loan move to Everton, which is slightly concerning because I'm, sure, I'm now just remembering Everton are one of the better teams in this save. So I have essentially just given them one of our best wingers because he asked to leave a while ago, but he decided to stay. But I don't forget those type of things. But look who we just brought in. Speedy Timo. So, obviously now, I mean, this is FIFA. This is not real life. I probably wouldn't sign him in real life just because he is very mistake prone. But, you know, this is FIFA. I'm controlling him. I'm not going to be making all those mistakes. I think he's going to end up being a very good player for us. He is insanely quick as well, so that will definitely help. But... We have our chance to win another f trophy for the first time, the Community Shield, as we face Liverpool at Wembley. So this is the look that I think I'm going to go with for the season. We're going to be playing a 3-1-4-2. Mendes is going to be the keeper. Vardok, Jimenez, and Ake are in the back line. Zakaria defensive mid. Pereira and Robinson center mids. Barry and Alger on the wings with Werner and Kane as the strikers. I'm not 100% sold on this formation, but I, th I think this is what I want to do. Liverpool are playing their 4-3-3 holding. I mean, they have a pretty good front line in Firmino, Mane, and Kent. Back line looks a little shaky. I mean, they have Mignolet in goal, so hopefully we score a couple past him. And here are the highlights for this game. Now they've got a chance in this part of the pitch. Oh, in goes the cross. And they have scored! They do lead now by two, and they've worked very hard for this. It should get them across the line at the end of the match. We'll see. Right to the side of the goal, and nicking off the inside. Cut off, and there it is, the goal. Well, he's done it. What a great moment to score on his debut for his new club. Well, you always want to get off to a quick start, and he's certainly done that. Harry Kane, another fine goal from the Englishman. Well, scoring in any game is worthy of celebration. Great chance, super goal. Oh, he's through. Shots on, and they managed to score here. Made such a difference to this team, not just with the couple of goals we've seen, but with his overall game as well. I think this is a pretty good way to introduce yourself to the world. 6-1 to one victory in the Community Shield. I mean, we are a big club now. We just spanked Liverpool, who won the league. So... 
how you doing now? Little Cambridge isn't so little anymore. Look at that trophy. We can put that right next to the FA Cup. So now we've won the FA Community Shield and the FA Cup. Safe to say I'm loving life in England right now. So Aiden Campos is going on a two-year long move for Reading. I mean, I want him to do well, but he's just not good enough yet. Callum Murphy has been sold to Ipswich for $4.1 million. Leonardo Castro is going on a two-year loan move to QPR. Get some good playing time, hopefully. But we are now in the Euro League because we won the FA Cup last episode. I wasn't sure what it exactly meant. I know we had at least a chance of being in Europe. I didn't know if it was guaranteed or not. But we're in Europe. And looking at our group, Shakhtar is probably going to give us some problems. Malmo should be easy for us. And same for Dundalk. So, I mean, we're a legitimate big club now. We're the, probably the group favorites in the Euro League. And let's get our first game underway. We are hosting Malmo. We are using the same exact lineup as the Community Shield game. Malmo are playing a 4-4-2. I've used the club before. I know Strandberg is going to be very good. But other than that, I think this is a very winnable game. Here are the highlights. To put them in front. Well, they've broken through here with a really good goal. And the celebrations reflect that. The supporters are going crazy. It's a terrific moment for the team. The break is definitely on. Going for goal. And they have scored. And they do lead now by two. And they've worked very hard for this. It should get them across the line at the end of the match. We'll see. It's a good ball. They could be in. The shot's off. Goal. It's his third goal. It's a hat-trick today. He's really been on form. He scored from the spot. It was, in fact, a very winnable game. 4-0 victory to start our European campaign. I mean, pure domination, top to bottom. And honestly, things are going good for once. And here's a little bit of bad news, but not exactly horrible news. Brian Quinn has broken his metatarsal. He's out for five weeks. He's not a starter, but he is a player that comes off the bench frequently. But I don't think it's that big of an issue. We won another Manager of the Month award, this time for September. So we are, we are cruising. But that we got to slow down a little bit, okay? Renato Pereira just tore his calf. He's out for six weeks. That's going to be tough, but hopefully he should be back for the 2024, so that should not be that big of an issue. Timo Werner, however, yeah, just about two weeks later, tore his calf. He's going to be out for six weeks. That is an issue because we are now starting to stockpile injuries, and if I've played FIFA before, I know that these things just te tend to keep snowballing into half your team being out. And here we go, Alger, broken ankle, he's out for seven weeks. So despite all the injuries in the Euro League, we were able to advance. Finished second in the group, 13 points. I mean, it's all that really mattered, and it was very obvious, like I said. Dundalk and Malmo will be no challenge for us. It's going to be tough against Donetsk. And I don't know why. Vardok has decided he wants to leave. If the circumstances would have been different. Dude, you're starting in the back three of a very, very good, young, promising team. Why do you want to leave? So yeah, trying to negotiate a contract with them. It's not going to work. Fardok will be leaving very short, very soon. But we're top of the league. Like, this is the stuff that I don't understand. We're top of the league. We're, we're progressing into the knockout rounds of the Euro League. 
and our one of our best center backs, one of our best players at the club, young player as well, just decides, you know what, I want to leave. I just, I don't understand. This has happened all series long, and I can honestly say I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. Because, I mean, we, our team would be so good if we didn't keep losing all these big key players. But for some reason, every year, one of them decides, oh, we're doing extremely well. Eh, it's time to go. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just fed up with it. So, yeah. I mean, he's like our, like, 10th player to leave, so... This is nothing new. We've done this before. We'll we'll bounce back. We'll rebound. We'll change the team. You know, I'm adaptable. It's it's gonna be fine. Hopefully. So yeah, next episode, continue on our Euro League journey. See how that goes. Hopefully, keep winning the Premier League and figure out what what we're gonna do with Vardok. So subscribe if you want to see that. And it is J Beebs signing off.